Hi everyone, we're just gonna give it a few minutes. Um, let everyone settle in and join. Um, so we'll start in about a minute or two. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and get started um, and let everyone else trickle in. Um, so welcome everyone to our second webinar, um, our informational webinar on the Digitizing Utilities Prize Round 2. My name is Noah Kobayashi and I'm one of the uh, prize leads. Um, and we've got some really exciting updates for you all um, about Digitizing Utilities. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Uh, so first, a uh, quick snapshot of what we'll be talking about today. We'll hear uh, from the Office of Electricity, uh, Sandra Jenkins, who will give us a quick overview. And then we'll also hear from uh, Jody uh, from the Office of Cybersecurity, Energy Security and Emergency uh, Response, or commonly referred to as CSER. Um, I'll do a quick uh, recap of the Digitizing Utilities Prize. Um, we do have a more in-depth uh, webinar previous, that was previously recorded available on the HeroX page. Um, if you want some more information and greater detail about the prize, then we'll jump into some important prize updates, um, talk a little bit about the matchmaking um, and some frequently asked questions that we've been getting, and then leave it um, open for um, some questions and some answers at the end. So with that, um, I'll hand it over to uh, Sandy from the Office of Electricity. Great. Um... So I'm Sandra Jenkins. I'm the director of grid controls within the Office of Electricity. And um, not everybody's familiar with uh, the organization of the Department of Energy. So I wanted to take a, a quick second to talk about that. Um, the Office of Electricity is uh, an office that really focuses on um, the grid system itself, including the components, the control and operation of that system and um, managing managing loads and integrating the grid edge. And so we work a lot with other offices, including EERE, new, um, which is um, uh, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, Nuclear Energy, Fossil, um, FECM, which is Fossil and Carbon Capture. Uh, and then, you know, on the other end uh, with EERE again on the, the loads and uh, things like electric vehicles, um, and uh, customer owned or you know behind the meter solar. And so we, we're kind of the stitching in between those two areas of the loads and the supply of power. So, so that's a little bit of what we do, um, both on the transmission and distribution side. Next. And so within, within the Office of Electricity, there's a couple different uh, areas that we're, or at least I focus on. Uh, one is on transmission reliability and renewable integration. Um, you know, we're relating to this prize, it's really understanding uh, wide area situational awareness, being able to utilize sensor data sets to help uh, inform system operation, both, you know, what type of information is needed to share across transmission and distribution is another Kind of growing thing um, that we've seen needs for, especially in terms of making sure the transmission system is able to understand what components of the system it should, uh, it could load shed, um, and which ones that it probably shouldn't if it's providing power from DER. Um, and so, so those are kind of some of the things we do there. Um, but also looking at automation, especially of non-critical tasks. Um, for you know, helping to improve reliability, but also you know affordability and and because um, as the grid gets more complicated, there's and the speed increases for which decisions have to be made. Automation is certainly helpful. Um, next slide. Great. And um, the other area is which is far more relevant to this prize. Um, this you know. I, 
I'm the kind of DOE lead for the initial digitizing utilities prize, which was started last year, and now this current iteration. And, um, you know, a lot of what we're doing is trying to use sensor data to improve system visibility and system understanding, especially as these new resources are added to the system with different response, different capabilities and functionalities understanding the impact to the system, how you might operate it differently, really requires better visibility and sensing of that system um, at higher fidelity or just incorporating and combining different data sets. Um, lots, again, automation uh, opportunities for non-critical tasks, especially on the distribution system um, where communication uh, infrastructure is kind of limited. You might want to do some edge computing and, um, you know, one of the other really important areas for utilizing sensors on the system is being able to get verification and validation of different components and system performance of those components, uh, including other sensors when they're installed um, and making sure that you have visibility into the, the actual performance versus the, uh, you know, uh, initially expected performance of, of those types of devices. Um, and, you know, I think for, for this prize, you know, the, the types of things, which is, which is in more detail in the rules document, so you can spend some time there, but, um, you know, the, the, especially for the digitizing utilities component of the prize, focusing on things like addressing data quality, interoperability, increasing utilities, um, ability to respond to events with new information and um, better, better visualized information. Um, Increasing data set uh, accessibility and also interoperability across different areas of utilities, um, really helping to modernize their whole uh, system and, and how they use the data that they have from, you know, sometimes sensors are installed for one purpose, but that data can be used for other purposes within use the utility. And with that, I will hand it off to my CSER colleague. Yes, great, thank you. Hey guys, hey, I'm Jody Couch from the Office of Cybersecurity, Energy Security and Emergency Response, otherwise known as CSER. Um, I'm a cybersecurity specialist and program manager in our uh, risk management tools and technology division. So um, CSER leads the department's efforts to strengthen the security and resilience of um, the US energy infrastructure against all threats and hazards. Um, mitigate impacts from cybersecurity, physical incidents, supply chain, and climate-based events, and assist with response and restoration activities. Um, you know, CSER has a lot of roles. Um, it's a pretty broad portfolio, and a lot of these roles and responsibilities are outlined in various executive order statutes and presidential directives, but one of the key takeaways is that CSER actually implements DOE's role as the sector risk management agency for the energy sector. And, um, you know, some of the things that we're looking at, particularly in the risk management uh, tools and technology division, this is where we focus on research development and demonstration um, of those technologies and techniques that really address the cybersecurity, physical, electromagnetic pulse, geomagnetic, and climate-based risks facing the sector. We like to partner with asset owners, operators, academia, manufacturers, our national laboratories, and other federal agencies um, to really get that broad perspective and figure out how we can deploy innovative approaches to really strengthen the security and resiliency of the electricity, oil, and natural gas assets. And we do have sort of a kind of cybersecurity priorities. Um, and you'll find that this prize really aligns with those first kind of first three priorities, but I'll list all five of them anyway, so you know sort of where the office is focusing its attention. The first one is really to increase the cyber visibility of the critical energy systems and networks. We're also trying to build security into the future, including through the clean energy grid, um, getting security built into those distributed energy resources um, and, and having that, uh, those protections built in upfront instead of uh, putting them on after the fact. Managing supply chain risks and digital components of our nation's critical energy infrastructure 
strengthening the current and future energy cyber workforce, and establishing policies, procedures, and capabilities to enable, enable cyber preparedness and incident response. So again, this prize really aligns uh, more with those first three priorities. Um, what we're really trying to get out of this is, is really increasing the ability of utilities to, in real time, detect, mitigate, and then operate through any sort of incident such that we don't have any failures or downtime, or if we do, we just have sort of a graceful degradation. And so we're really hoping to see some, um, some unique ideas uh, come forward um, to help us uh, with this goal. So that's all I have. Great. Uh, thank you to both Sandy and Jody for giving an overview um, for both your offices. Um, it's really great to have you both on the call and give competitors, um, you know, a very brief and, and quick insight to your respective offices and what um, your goals and, and visions um, are uh, in general, um, but also as it relates uh, to this prize. So um, I'll quickly go over digitizing utilities. Um, just again, a quick highlight, we do have a more um, in-depth web webinar that was previously recorded um, and is has been made available um, on the uh, Hero X page uh, for digitizing utilities. So again, if you're looking for more information um, and greater detail about the prize, A, be sure to uh, read the official rules document, um, also found on Hero X, um, and then also be sure to check out that uh, webinar. So digitizing utilities round two is a $1.85 million prize um, that connects utilities with interdisciplinary uh, teams of software developers and data experts uh, to transform digital systems and data analytics analytics uh, for utilities um, in the energy sector. Um, so digi the Digitizing Utilities Prize uh, supports competitors as they develop innovative solutions to transform data analytics and system digi digitization for utilities, um, such as energy usage data, synchrophaser data, weather data, fire assessment data, and a lot more. And then um, new to round two, um, we have opened up a new track uh, for innovators to focus uh, specifically on addressing uh, cybersecurity threats and risks um, through demonstrated improvements in risk identification, analysis, prediction, um, or proactive response uh, for enhanced protection of digital energy infrastructures. Um, and so like I mentioned, in this uh, round of digitizing utilities, we've got two tracks. The first track is utility digitization and uh, data challenge. And then our second track is the utility cybersecurity challenge. So for track one, competitors will work with their utility partner to identify a data related challenge um, and propose a thorough solution by the end of phase two. And then conversely for track two, uh, competitors will, will again work with their utility partner uh, to identify a cybersecurity related challenge. And again, propose um, a pretty thorough and demonstrated solution. Um, and competitors, um, you will need to identify in your submission if you're competing in track one or track two. Um, but similarly, if you have an idea that addresses both um, a data and a cybersecurity challenge, you are um, eligible to compete in both tracks. And there is a third option um, to select that when you're completing your submission. Um, and competitors who choose to compete in both track one and two with the same solution are eligible to receive prizes um, from both tracks. And so regardless of which track that you participate in, either the data and digitization challenge track or the cybersecurity challenge track, uh, both tracks will follow the exact same um, timeline and structure. So both will be composed of two phases, uh, plan and progress. So for phase one, uh, plan, you will form teams and connect with the utility partner um, to identify your data or cybersecurity challenge and propose a solution. Uh, we'll take up to eight winners um, for the track one, which is, again, the utility digit digitization and data challenge. Um, and those eight winners uh, will receive $75,000 cash each. Um, and then similarly, for track two, which is the utility cybersecurity challenge, We'll take six winners and they will each receive $75,000.
Um, and then in phase two, which is what we are calling progress, you'll work with your, your identified utility partner um, for about six months to develop and refine um, your solution that addresses the uh, challenge that you identified in phase one. And then for the utility digitization and data challenge track, we'll select up to three winners and they'll get $200,000 cash each. And then in the cybersecurity challenge, we'll select uh, one team to win uh, $200,000. And so again, for both tracks, um, you'll have to submit the following information, um, a 90 second video that will be made public, um, a cover page, a narrative that answers four questions, one summary uh, PowerPoint slide, um, and then provide required the required letters of commitment or, su or support from your utility partner. Everything will be submitted online at um, our prize platform, HeroX, and there's the link to it as well. Um, and you can also use HeroX to review the official prize rules, um, ask questions, receive updates, um, post on the forum, connect with other um, you know, members if you're looking for to add other competitors to your team, and so on and so forth. And so um, kind of the, the uh, main point of today is to provide you all with some important prize updates. Uh, so the first um, update is that your submission, the submission deadline for phase one has been pushed to May 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, competitors, you must complete your entire submission and get it uploaded um, to the HeroX platform by May 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern. We don't accept late uh, submissions. So please make sure to get them in early and get them uh, completely taken care of before that deadline because the platform will lock you out at 5 p.m. Eastern. And then another really exciting update that we've got is we are interest, introducing what we are calling a demo day um, that will occur during phase two. And it is only for the competitors who are participating in the utility digitization and data challenge track. Um, and instead of a um, video or, or just general video that you'll be submitting in phase two, you'll now submit a demonstration video as part of your phase two submission. So again, this is only in phase two. This is not for phase one. Um, and in that demonstration video, you'll showcase, um, or sorry, in, in demo day, you'll showcase this video and then also do a presentation to a panel of judges. Um, and then that will be followed by a live Q&A. This is a required event. So we will need at least one uh, person from your team to attend this event. Um, and more information and details will be provided about 30 days before the actual uh, demo day. But we're super excited about this um, and are looking forward to, to uh, getting you all um, in the room and, and demonstrating what you've achieved uh, so far in the prize. And then our other super exciting update um, is that we are now offering vouchers uh, and vouchers will only be awarded to the teams who win um, the utility digitization and data track um, in phase two. Each voucher will be worth $75,000 and they um, will be, um, you'll be able to redeem them at a single national lab um, and they can only be used at a national lab um, and not an outside facility. And so for those of you who are unaware what vouchers are, vouchers are a um, funding mechanism that uh, the national labs use to uh, bring prize winners um, into the national lab complex and give them access to the tools, equipment, and expertise needed to continue to continue developing um, and testing their innovative solutions. We'll have a lot more um, information about the vouchers in the April 2024 modification um, of the official rules, and that will be coming soon. So please make sure that you're following the HeroX page um, to receive updates about it. Um, and once that new modification is posted, please read through um, the actual guidelines for voucher uses and the demo day as well. Um, and we hope that you'll, um, you're will you just excited about vouchers as we are. And so um, I now wanna shift to some of the matchmaking and 
uh, frequently asked questions that we've been getting. But first, I'll hand it over to um, Anne from Yet2 um, to talk a little bit about the matchmaking. Great, thank you so much, Noah. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Anne McLaren. I'm with Yet2. Yet2 is one of the power connectors, or is the power connector for this um, Digitizing Utilities Prize. So really happy to be working with NREL on this prize. Our role um, is to essentially assist any of you that need assistance with this prize. That can range from questions and clarifications for the application process, and uh, right through to the, the matchmaking assistance, which we're facilitating at this point. So we'd encourage um, any of you that haven't reached out to me to please reach out to me. I have heard from a lot of you, so thank you so much for reaching out to me. For those people that have sent me their information, um, I rest assured I have compiled all the information. Um, I think I've tried to get back to most of you just to confirm that I do have it. So please don't think that it hasn't been received. Um, we will be matching non-utility organisations with utilities as those opportunities come in. Unfortunately, we can't guarantee matches for everybody, but we will be providing as many opportunities as we possibly can. Um, if you have any existing relationships with utilities, it's always great to continue those relationships. We're happy to keep you on our um, list at the same time. So that gives you that you know, double chance of being able to be matched up with the utility. Um, for any utilities that are on the line, um, this opportunity is also for you. So please, we're happy if you want to reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to discuss your challenges, whether it be digitization or cybersecurity challenges. Um, and we're here to help you as well, help you uh, get matched up with these uh, non-utility partners that are keen to support your challenges. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear from any any other utility partners that are on the line. That would be great. Um, one other point I wanted to touch on for utilities that are on the line, we're trying to, or NREL is trying to make this prize, you know, as easy for you as possible. So it's a fairly, um, fairly low bar for you at the moment. You don't need to put too many resources into it. And this is what we wanted to try and achieve with this prize. Um, we want you to get that support that you need. So uh, feel free to reach out. Um, we'll be, we're happy to take up a lot of the legwork to make sure you get matched with the right and the most appropriate um, organization. Um, one other point, if you have not reached out to me for any non-utility partners that have not reached out to me yet, um, please do so, feel free to do so. And when you do, we'd love to hear you know, essentially what your superpower is, what is your key differentiator, what is your key experience, um, what is that key component that you can offer utilities? Um, if you can articulate that, that is really helpful. Um, I think that covers most of it, Noah. If there's any questions, please feel free to put them in the Q&A or the chat. Um, we're happy to address those at the end. Um, my email address is on the screen. Um, there's also a link on the HeroX site, which many of you have used um, if you'd like to schedule time for a quick chat. So it's a pleasure and I look forward to working with, with you all. Thanks, Noah. Of course. Thank you so much, Anne and, and Yet2 for uh, supporting us in this matchmaking. Um, and again, I want to highlight that, you know, uh, NREL and Yet2 can't guarantee that a, a utility match will be made, but uh, please be rest assured that Anne and her team are doing their absolute best um, to try and facilitate as many connections um, as possible. And so then I also want to jump into a few questions that we've um, been getting uh, a little often. So I want to put them all out there and get the answers out there. Uh, so the first question is, is there a template for the letter of commitment needed from a utility company? And so while we don't have a specific template um, for the letter of commitment or support from a utility partner, we have put together a list of suggested items that should be included in your letter, both if you're a utility submitting to the prize or if you're partnering with a team. Um, this list can be found under the resources tab um, on the Digitizing Utilities Hero X prize page. Uh, second question is, can the utility be the team lead um, and the entry that receives any funds that are awarded to the team? So yes, um, a utility 
can be the team lead on the submission. Um, it's not required, um, but we would strongly encourage that utilities partner with an outside team. We'd love to help um, you know, utilize this prize to foster some of those connections. Um, but whether you partner um, with an outside team or you keep it internal, you, utility can receive uh, funds from the prize. Uh, the next question that we've gotten a handful of times is, can you compete in both track and track two? Um, again, uh, yes, that, that is a possibility, um, but a competitor can only submit a single submission. But when you are submitting your uh, application, there is an option um, in section five where it'll ask you which track you're submitting to. And there's uh, it'll say track one, uh, data analytics or di data digitization, um, challenge. Um, and then the second option will be the utility cybersecurity challenge. And then we've got a third option that says both the utility digitization and data challenge um, and the cybersecurity challenge. And that's where you can click um, to be eligible for both tracks. Uh, another question is, can multiple teams be partnered with the same uh, utility company? Yes. However, each submission um, from those teams must support a different idea for the utility. And then um, these next uh, couple um, kind of go in tandem together, um, but can non-utilities submit more than one application? So as stated in our official rules document, a competitor um, is only allowed to submit a single application. Um, you can submit an additional application so long as both um, all team members are different from each submission and the submission ideas are different from themselves. Um, we want to make that clear that both of those have to be true um, in order for the submissions to be eligible. Uh, can a non-utility com competitor uh, partner with multiple utilities? Um, competitors are really encouraged to only partner with a single utility per submission. And that really comes down to, um, we don't want you to um, be trying to wrangle multiple parties um, and get too many voices around the table um, as you're trying to develop your solution. So we really encourage you to select a single utility um, per submission. Again, if you're doing two submissions um, and you want to have different utilities, that's fine as long as you have about one um, utility, main partner utility for the submission. And then kind of in conjunction to that question, we've also gotten, is there any benefit to having multiple utility partners um, and providing letters of support. And so we would say that, you know, having multiple letters of support may strengthen your submission. But again, uh, we would strongly encourage you to be partnering with a single utility um, in, in your submission. Um, and the additional letters of support from the other utilities um, should only be able to be there to provide additional context um, for your submission and your innovation. And then lastly, um, a question we've gotten a handful of times is, uh, is my idea or topic within the scope of the prize? So the digitizing utilities prize team and yet to are unable to provide details or our advice on if a submission is within the scope um, of the prize. Competitors, you are encouraged to read the official rules document, um, again, made available on the HeroX prize page um, to make that determination on your own. There are some potential prize uh, submission topics um, listed on pages five and six in the official rules document that can kind of help get, get help you to get a sense of which um, topics might or are more likely to be within the scope of the prize and considered. So with that, a um, couple next steps. Uh, please make sure you're following the prize page um, on HeroX. Again, we will be having um, a April 2024 rules modification going up there soon. So please be sure that you're following the prize page um, to be uh, aware once that gets posted. Um, again, we've got a first webinar, which is again available on HeroX um, that is available for, um, if you're looking for greater details on the prize, um, we're uh, also uh, going, like I said, um, the April 2024 modifications will be posted soon. Uh, so once those do come out, please make sure you read those um, in its entirety. And then lastly, um, again, as a final reminder, 
please submit your applications through HeroX before May 7th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Again, we don't accept late submissions, so please make sure you submit your applications um, early um, and before the deadline. And then lastly, should you have any questions um, or need any further clarification on the prize, uh, please contact us at Digitizing Utilities Prize at nrel.gov. Uh, so with that, I will open up to some Q&A. Hey, Noah, it looks like we have a few questions here. Um, I think the biggest thing that we want to reiterate is that there are some specific questions in here about scope or about specific teaming situations, and we might not be able to answer those on the call today. So something like that would be best emailed um, or reviewed through the official rules document. But I'm going to go through a couple here and we'll kind of direct people in the right place if that works for you, Noah. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Um, so this question says, is it okay to use a product under development as a proof of concept for a project proposal? There's some additional information here, but it applies directly to this applicant's submission details. So I'm going to leave that part of the question on. Yeah, so um, I think that might be a question that um, might be best answered in a follow-up email. So um, we'll be sure to reach out to you um, because of the additional context that you provided um, that we're, we're keeping hidden. Um, we'll, we'll follow up with you after the webinar um, to give you a more direct answer um, with that. Sounds great. It looks like this was also an anonymous attendee. So whoever submitted this question, you're welcome to email us directly. Um, this next question here, could we team up with a different utility partner in the progress phase? So we, um, as part of your phase one submission, you will be required to submit um, a letter of commitment or support from a utility partner. And that's the same partner that we expect um, you to work with during phase two. Um, now, granted, if something were to happen um, with that utility partner and, um, you know, you're, you're able to find a backup um, and work with them on the same solution, um, you know, we might be able to consider that, but please reach out to us um, if that happens and we can kind of guide you um, and let you know uh, what our thoughts are and, and depending on the situation at the time. But our initial um, hopes is that you partner with one during phase one, and that's the partner um, that you will work with um, throughout phase two. Perfect. Thanks, Noah. And it looks like there's a question here for you if you'd like to answer it about matchmaking. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Carly. Um, there is not a specific deadline for matchmaking. We would like to think that um, most of those matches are made by early April, sort of first week of April, but we don't want to commit to a specific deadline at this stage um, just because we want to make sure any opportunity that comes in at any time, um, we can take care of it. Perfect. Thank you, Anne. All right, Noah, looks like there's another question here, kind of a similar situation to the first question. So I'm just going to ask the front half of the question. Um, does it have to be a solely grid connected utility company or will a water utility company also work? So that's a good question. Um, in our April 2024 rules modification, uh, we will have a specific set of um, defining factors that we are considering a utility. Um, so again, I can reach out to you prior uh, to that rules modification going out um, and provide you with those details. But we again, in um, in our rules modification, we will have a spelled out definition that we're looking for um, for utilities within this price uh, specifically. Great. Thank you, Noah. Um, going down the list, let's see. Video shouldn't have any third party content. Is open source or AI generated content okay? I think this is specifically about the 90 second um, submission. So uh, we'd love for it to be your uh, content, not necessarily open source or AI generated content. Um, we'd love, there, there's no format for the video. So it's really just for um, our prize judges and our reviewers and DOE to get a quick sense of 
you know, who are you, who's your team, who's your utility partner, what's the challenge you'll be solving. Um, again, just something, um, you know, something short that gives us a, a quick synopsis of your prize, um, or sorry, of your solution. Um, that's really what we're looking for. So we'd ask that um, there not be AI generated or open source content necessarily. Um, but again, there's not a specific format that you have to follow um, for that video submission. I'm going to follow up on that a little bit. Um, there are some um, there's some guidance in the appendix regarding the types of content that you should be submitting um, and it being your own. So make sure that whatever you're submitting abides by that appendix and abides by those guidelines. Um, further, I will say um, AI generated videos are not, uh, you know, when reviewers are seeing that, it's it's pretty clear that they're AI generated. And I don't think it's particularly a good look uh, for your team. So, um, you know, two things there. One, make sure you're not breaking the rules. And then also, um, you know, think about how that's going to be viewed by the reviewers. So a couple things to think of. Great. Thank you for following up, Alec. Um, there's a question here that says the rules request expri express written consent from all competitors. Do we need to submit this consent letter or is part of the application process, Noah, um, expressing that written consent from competitors? So I would say that latter piece that the submission application um, is that express written consent that um, you as the team captain, when you are listing yourself um, and any team members, um, that's that's the express uh, consent there. We don't need a separate letter um, from all um, partners from your team. Perfect, thank you. Um, this next question, Alec, um, you may have answered this in in your last input, um, but the question is, how important is the use of AI in this initiative? I feel like the question is a little bit different than the intent of our other one, so I don't know if we want to touch on that as well. Um, I imagine they're probably referring to AI for their actual solution mm -hmm. um, and not... I'm assuming that's what they're asking here and not using AI for their putting their submission package together. Um, what I would say is that, um, you know, that's, those are, AI is not particularly a subject that we specifically called out as some like examples of um, types of solutions um, that we're looking for. Um, I will say that we've had them in the past and they're not particularly strong. Also, it needs to be agreed to by the utility you're working with. So if the utility is in agreement that that is a solution that they're looking for, then I think it could be considered. Um, but, you know, I would take those things into account that. It's not something we specifically talked about. It's not particularly strong. And the uh, utility you're working with needs to be in agreement that this solution is something that they're looking for. Got it. Okay. Thank you for that additional context, Alec. Um, let's see here. I think we have one more question, but I'm going to encourage them to reach out uh, through the email provided. So no, if you want to go back up one slide, um, just so we can have that contact information there. Perfect. There seems um, to be another question about um, the amount of words used for, uh, can everyone see that? Uh -huh. Yeah, so you, okay. I can, yeah, I can jump in. I think, um, Noah, if, if you're in agreement, I mean, the no, the 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 answer, I think there is no wiggle room. So if, you know, the 2,500 word max is the max, that is what you have to work for the, the questions one through four. And then with the optional fifth question, 750 word max, if you're under the 750 word max, you do not get to 
use the additional words for your um, 200 and or 2,500 word one or yes, 2,500 word question one through four. So um, no, you don't get to use any wiggle room. Um, and just, you know, it's a fairness thing, right? Like if there's teams that aren't answering question five, they don't get extra words. So no one else should either. Yeah, completely agree with you, Alec. Yeah, thank you, Alec, for that. That looks like it's the end of our question list. If we want to give maybe another minute or so just for anyone else to put in questions. Otherwise, this recording will be available on Hero X in the next week or so, um, as well as the slides, if there's anything um, that you'd like to review in the slides. And I do think someone asked a good question. We've just been saying April 2024 modification. So we will be shooting for the front half of April um, for that rule update. But in Hero X, we'll provide an update to everyone following the prize. And you'll receive an email that says, hey, the rules have been updated um, and they're now available. I don't think we've had any other questions come in, Noah. So I think we're done over in this end. Great. Thanks to um, all the panelists who have joined, um, Jody, Sandy, and um, Anne from Yet2. Uh, thanks to all of our competitors uh, for joining this morning or uh, early afternoon, depending on where you are in the US. Um, and we look forward to seeing your submissions come uh, May 7th. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>